Coming up today on Locked On at Texas Tech, we've got a sunrise party at Jones Stadium this weekend. Can the Red Raiders resist the snooze button and get off to a fast start? We investigate next on Locked On Texas Tech. You are Locked On Texas Tech, your daily podcast on the Texas Tech Red Raiders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Great to be with you again on Locked On Texas Tech on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day, always free and available on YouTube or anywhere you get podcasts. And thanks as always for making us your first listen. Today's episode brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use our code Locked On College for $20 off your first purchase. With the only Chris Level, I'm Casey Cowan. Chris, great to be back with you, wrapping up the week, getting ready for the Mean Green in North Texas Saturday morning from Jones Stadium. We will get to, obviously, the matchup. Some memories of yesteryear, Mean Green yesteryear, which has not always been all that pleasant, but it's been some time since we've seen them on the opposing sideline. We'll get to that, and also, of course, the matchup, in 2024, we've talked about the familiar face, familiar name, and Eric Morris leading North Texas. What exactly is he leading? We'll get into a little bit more of that today. And of course, you coming off of your conversation uh, with Joey McGuire on his weekly show, always curious to pick your mind. And a few different things I want to get to uh, with you regarding the conversation, but it really seemed like, again, the thing that stands out to me, defensive focus when we began the week defensive focus as we wrap up the week as coach McGuire is still looking to get some better results out of that side of the football. Yeah. You know, on his show last night, um, it's like we got into a conversation. I can't remember if it started with, if it was me or if it was somebody from the audience or just a question that we had or whatever, but it, bottom line is, you know, it's, he was pretty passionate about, his stance on just not just text defense, but ultimately what he wants it to be big picture. And he said, you know, and it was kind of like, man, I'm not trying to offend anybody or point blame here or there. I'm just what he's like. I'm trying to explain to you how I view us winning the big 12. And he goes, the defense is going to be the one constant. And he goes, let me explain. He's like, the defense is like, it, it's going to play good in warm weather. It's going to play good in cold weather. It's going to play good in rainy weather. If it's good, it's going to, you know, if you have a quarterback that gets hurt, if you have a quarterback that's just not playing well, uh, you know, good defense can overcome a lot of that. And that that's ultimately, I think, where he's coming from. We kind of just like, man, we got to play better defense. And if we want to win this thing and be in ever, ever be in contention, whether it's now or – you know, in, in years to come, it's, it's, that's where he feels like you just have to be better. Um, I don't know if you have to be elite, but you know, Texas last year was really good on defense. We know what that defensive line was like last year and, you know, Baylor, the year that he was there won the deal and, you know, Kansas, Kansas state, I think was really, I mean, you know, so just on and on, I mean, it, there's been a common theme with, a lot of the teams that have won the Big 12 in recent years, and it's just like they, they may not have the best defense, but they're pretty darn close. And he just he's wants his team to take these next steps. And what's frustrated him, I think, is that it's like they – these – a lot of the issues that they've had are correctable. He understands the youth, but it it's – you, you got to overcome that. And what I think frustrated them about week one to week two was they fixed a lot of what, of what the problems were in week one. But then, you know, then you wonder, it's like, did they create more problems by fixing from week one to week two? And it's like, okay, now we got a whole new set because it's like, it's just throw it all over the lot in week one. And now it's running all over the lot in week two. So what are we? Can can we can we even out? Can we bring it, it down a bit? Um, and I and I think North Texas will certainly try to test you more through the air. But Chandler Morris very capable of of running the football and and making you look silly if you just drop everybody and he sees some space and all that. But anyway, I, I think it was a. I, I certainly understand where the head coach is coming from as far as talking defense and 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 all that because. That reminds me of like when Spike was here and John Goodner was calling plays and it was the swarm and all that. You weren't explosive on offense. 
you, you you were you were running it and the occasional pass, but you could get after people uh, and and do it with with some dudes, uh, Monte Rager and company, and Marcus Coleman and Zach Thomas and Tracy Saul, and that was that run of you you had some guys that could play some defense. So anyway, so so there's you an explanation there. Yeah, and it's really kind of funny, isn't it? How consistent across just about any sport you pick, and there may be one out there I'm not thinking about underwater basket weaving or whatever it might be <laughs> elite teams defend championship contending teams defend shots don't always fall bats don't always connect to baseballs but it seems like great defense always travels why'd you go to the final four exactly chris beard mark adams when you're naming some of that era of football that included uh, a pulse on the defensive side i'm thinking about what you uh rooted your identity in from a basketball standpoint it's the it's no secret like the verdict is in Defense wins championships is a saying for a reason. Now, the ability to put yourself on the radar via a defensive priority, I think, is still an interesting one for Texas Tech and many other programs of their ilk because premier positions at a premium. They're premier for a reason. A lot of those reside on the defensive football. Who's Alabama calling first? Probably a DT and a cornerback. I don't know. Just a wild guess. But good teams championship contending teams hardware contending teams all want these great defensive players because again that's what keeps you in a position to compete for wins week after week so i'm not saying it's easy and that was always the kind of thing i'm not saying it's easy to uh, establish that kind of thing as part of your identity and that's always the thing that i recall about the mike leach era was there was this uh satisfaction in being on a radar which i think you did because of an identity that was established that really stood out now, at that time, it was rooted in offense, 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 offense. And I kind of wondered, like, to get in the neighborhood, maybe you have to arrive in that way, but to stay in the neighborhood, progress in the neighborhood, at what point do you have to really turn it to the defensive side of things? So I love to hear that as a priority because, again, the verdict is in, and we know what works, and that is a, a culture that's rooted in defense. But the reality is, man, that's really probably the most difficult thing to establish, right? Because – even if you can attract or identify those athletes that are upper shelf from a defensive standpoint, uh, defense, and this is also consistent across sports, requires things that a lot of people just don't want to do as far as players are concerned. So it's when you're a great defensive player, not only are you talented, but you've probably got intangibles that are really stacking up in the right way uh, to be that kind of football player. And again, that's why I think it's maybe the most difficult thing to establish as a coach in any sport because it takes a next level kind of guy in addition to the to the athletic things that uh, obviously you're just given by God. So uh, I wish him all the luck in the world. I'm glad to hear that, <laughs> that that's what we're looking to root it in. And I kind of wonder, as you're referring to, you know, correcting some things from week one, overcorrecting, undercorrecting, you're talking personnel, right? Because we were talking about how many were devoted to defending the past so often. And then what that turned into, this is against Washington State what that turned into as far as uh, rush yards on the ground. And I got to tell you, with what seems like to be a thinner defensive front by the week, <laughs> I, I don't know if you've really got like a good answer to say, all right, well, we're stacking chips back up front or we're going to be back on the back end making a priority. And it's kind of funny, again, how this comes about to maybe the hardest position to recruit or one of them, a guy that can really get after a quarterback because that makes everything look a little bit better, right? And that's one of those spots outside linebacker that's gotten even thinner over the first couple of weeks. And hopefully. First, today's episode brought to you by eBay Motors. And eBay has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and keep that ride or die ride on the road or elevate your car's game to the next level of performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, accessories of all kinds to fit your style, whether it's speed, power, or design you're into. eBay Motors has you covered with over 122 million parts to perfectly fit what you need. Just head over to ebay.com slash motors where you'll always find exactly what you're looking for and at no risk because of eBay's guaranteed fit. Your part is guaranteed to fit just right every time or your money back, keeping you burning rubber and not burning cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to keep your ride or die on the road and moving your life forward at ebay.com slash motors. eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers, eligible items only, exclusions do apply. 
Today's episode brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. And when you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. And that's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. And they're not just another job board. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which make it the best place to find the right hire. Gives you access to professionals you can't find anywhere else. And LinkedIn does all that while making the process easier easy and intuitive for you. Hiring is easy when you have that many quality candidates to choose from. So easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within only 24 hours. That's lightning fast. LinkedIn is constantly finding ways to make the process easier as well. They even just launched a feature that helps you write job descriptions, making the process even easier and quicker, plus more effective. So post your job for free today at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free today. Terms and conditions apply. And hopefully, hopefully some of that, you know, like I think Charles Esters won't play this week. Uh, Harvey Dyson is a maybe, but you know, at some point, maybe you sprinkle some more of these guys back in into the mix and you're not quite as thin there. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, and I, I go back to 08, like, you know, that just little range of time. I mean, Darcel McBath, who's on your staff now and Brandon Williams, and these were NFL guys, uh, you know, on the defensive side, that was Mike's, you know, best defense in, in, in that range to go with uh, elite offense, and then you see yep. what the results are. So Kobe Whitlock in the middle. I mean, yes, he really had and, it all Daniel over. Daniel Charbonnet and uh, you know yeah. Marlon Williams, and I mean, you just yeah, you just had lots of you know guys that I think played good football uh, at that point and kind of kept them healthy and and all that, and you progressed and well, whatnot. One of the other things that it's not necessarily relating to defense, but the 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 way your games have been officiated or the the your penalty problem yeah um i i think they you know i don't i don't think joey's going to be frustrated with um the the holding call occasionally um you know or maybe a play after the whistle if you're playing really hard i mean some of the effort type stuff and holding is subjective as we know what what he's just so frustrated about is just the the pre snap the mental mistakes uh, and all that. But one one of the things that he's decided to do, and we touched on this beginning of the week, but here's some more more in detail, is there's an NFL official named Brad Rogers that actually lives in Lubbock and he's a professor at Tech, and he's calling games in the NFL and he's agreed to kind of be a part of coming out to practices and then kind of passing along what. Um, you know, some feedback and things like that. There's also a, a Big 12 official that's not not going to do any Texas Tech games because of the conflict of interest, but he lives in Lubbock named Kelly Dieterding uh, that is also agreed to kind of come out. And I'm sorry, could I, you give me that last name one more time? Yeah, D- D- Dieterding. I think okay, I just want to make sure I heard you right. Yeah, that's right. Perfect bless, official name. <laughs> bless you. Phew. Yeah. Um, and he's a super nice guy. I've, I've met him on occasion and talked to him and all, right. all that, but and, and then other folks, but that that just gives you more some more context about who they're bringing in to kind of try to help fix and solve and coach him and and the players. And then you know I even went in further on the Chapman Lewis deal. I'm like, okay, so the week has gone along. So tell me tell me what you told Chapman Lewis on how to avoid you know this mm. penalty again. And he's like, well, that's the thing. If this was a Big Twelve game or a Big Twelve crew doing it. We could send this clip in and say, tell me how you would like for me to coach this going forward so that it is not a penalty. However, this was a very clearly a Pac-12 crew. And <laughs> uh, and so they there's nobody to to submit uh, you know, th- this call or get feedback from. But they they don't I, I don't think he's gonna say it like this, but I don't think they felt like that 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 is a penalty if you're going to take away or not call targeting on what happened to Koy Aiken on, on mm. the opposing sideline. So anyways, just wanted to clear that up. Um, Cause we got into, um, in no way am I suggesting you're losing again in, in, in against Washington state and Pullman because the officiating screwed you. It's not what we're saying. You just have had 21 penalties in the first two games. It's a problem. You're trying to address it. And here's how 
Um, yeah, by the way, there was a Washington State fan in the YouTube comments this week that actually said, uh, Pac-12 fans, this is paraphrasing, by the way, but the gist was Pac-12 refs, I'm sorry, uh, have not been great for years. You're not going to be the first ones to complain about it's Pac-12 crew. And I had to tell him, like, look, that's not at the top of our list, but you're right, they're trash. Yeah. But it's yeah. not at the top of the list. We've got to continue to hedge over and over. But even a Washington State fan, and there's oh, kicking that out at us. <laughs> and there's only three, uh, as Joey said tonight, there's only three Pac-12 crews for the time being. So there's one oh, yeah. off every weekend and two on. And you know, I mean, are are they gonna are they gonna give the benefit of the doubt to the Big 12 team when the Big 12 kind of screwed these guys out of work? I don't know. Whatever. Hey, hey, that ain't on us, bud. All right. <laughs> yeah. Pat, Mr. That's Pac-12 right. ref, look. Hey, come on. That's- We're trying to survive too. Um. A couple other things, you know, and, and he said, because I, I think one of the things I asked of him, I said, you know, when you have a game like you had and and you're, you're hearing some criticism or you can sense it, um, you, you know, and, and it doesn't go well, like there's this tendency from the outside to go, you know, for a lot of people to go, I hope they change this. And the, and the list <laughs> is like 47 things long on what you should change. Burn it down. Exactly. And what I have found being around athletics and coaches and of all different sports and all different levels is that typically that's when a lot of coaches like weak coaches or, or young coaches or inexperienced, they, they do, they get in there and they start scrapping everything like guys, this ain't working, throw it out. Let's try something different. But the good coaches and older ones or, or ones with more wisdom that's when they dig in even harder on what they truly believe in. Mm. That's why I think Joey's digging in on defense because this is what he knows. This is his core. Uh, Like it or not, this is who you hired. And he is a defensive minded coach at the end of the day. And that is bothering him more than other things. And there's a long list of things that can bother you and (laughs) tech after the two games that you've played. Totally understand. But I, I just, as I listen to him talk, I mean, I just think that's – you kind of understand the man, if that makes sense. And you yeah. may not agree with it. You may say, I strongly wish he would change these other six or 17 things. But um, I, I think that, he, you know, he just said it's not time to panic. It is not. We, we have things that are fixable and correctable. Can yeah. we fix everything immediately? Probably unrealistic, but it's a process, and we've got 10 games left. The tournament doesn't start until next week with Big 12 play starting. But, um, and then he kind of went on to, you know, kegs and eggs uh, with 11 a.m. kick. And uh, (laughs) he's like, get your breakfast burrito, eat the insides out, keep your tortilla so you can throw it, uh, get a keg in there, and uh, let's just mix some, some, some brunch or some. You know, whatever whatever you want to do with uh, with a, an early kick and uh, let's get after the mean green. Yeah, mix a highball. Make sure you get something in your belly, but we're talking highballs, folks. And you can't come out just rolling out groggy-eyed. You got to get it. I mean, whenever you show up to the parking lot, that's your business. But when you're in the parking lot, it's go time. You got to get right into it. You know, there's no slow rolling like an old Are you a mimosa guy? Ride. I'm down for one. It wouldn't be my first choice, but somebody hands me one or offers me one. <laughs> I'm down in it on game day and other days. Bloody Mary? Down for one. Somebody (laughs) hands me one. I'm down in it on game day and other days. Yeah, Yeah, it's game day. We got to get going. And that's that's bright and early in the morning, folks. That's Uh, right. I I probably should just keep going. Vodka, tequila, absolutely. uh, Seltzer, beer. You're just like, (laughs) yes. If somebody hands me one, sure. You made me hesitate for a moment when you said seltzer because that's usually a headache option. And I don't know. It may be too early in the day, but you got to do what you got to do, folks. Again, it's game day. We need a win. So this series, one that, well, brings to mind some thoughts of some years gone by that weren't that pleasant for a young Casey Cowan, a young Chris Level. There was a time where we had five years running of Red Raider and Mean Green collisions. Now, you may look back at the most recent one and see 42 to 14 and think, what difference is this series from most other power conference versus group of five or six or whatever the number will be tomorrow conferences? Well, a couple of ball games prior to that, Chris, didn't really line up that way as North Texas not only rattles off a couple of wins to end the last millennium, but they do it on your home field, which made it even a little tougher to swallow. And this was one of my early initiations as a Red Raider fan 
into the typical tech lifestyle because not very long after you drop one to North Texas, you take down a top five Aggie team. And it was like, wait, okay. So both these things can happen in that quick of an amount of time. And that would only be, uh, well, I don't know if it was the first, but uh, one of the early ones of many where you saw some wild swings. So hey, th- look is- for North Texas. I'm all I'm telling you. Yeah, that that double T on my shirt right there, that that's kind of it's all about losing to North Texas at home and then beating fifth ranked A and M at home <laughs> and storming the field and taking the goalposts and shoving that's them right. in a lake or, or up a street or somewhere. I don't know, but that <laughs> if you want to know, yeah, you're yeah. you are you are four and four against the Mean Green in your last eight outings against these guys, and it's been a while. Um, this was back there when you playing them a lot. I mean, I remember going to, I, I was at both of the games you're talking about. Uh, I, I've, I remember going in 96. I think I went to, cause I don't think you've played them in Denton in a long time, but in 96, it was kind of their turn to have the game, but you played it at Texas stadium. Like right. it, was, it was neutral site. And I remember going there and you, you won, but it wasn't, you know, I, I don't remember the, the final score, but I don't think it was like you just, just housed them. No, this um, was the housing. That was 30-0 to zero because God could look down on the Red oh, Raiders in Texas State. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm getting my scores mixed up. But it seems like you always play down to them. Oh, like, yeah, you've and, done and that they, a few times. And they, have the, and they have the chip on the shoulder deal, like where it's like there's a bunch of guys that would have loved to have maybe played for you that didn't get the call or the – offer and so you know whatever i don't know but that was always kind of the theme whenever you played these guys yeah and this will be no different um i think they can come in and score and uh they've got this this uh you know iowa state defensive scheme that they'll try to employ and i we all know this i love the 11 a.m kick when you're the road team yeah i do not like the 11 a.m kick when you're the home team we all know there won't. While we can talk about Bloody Marys and mimosas, there won't be enough people enough people out there drinking those. <laughs> it's late arriving. It's sleepy. It's the yeah. Friday night was crazy, and it's <laughs> you got to manufacture your own energy uh, tomorrow morning. So uh, we'll, we'll you know we'll see. I mean, I, I remember the the eleven a.m. kick when it was uh, when it was Tech and TCU, and you look up and it was twenty one nothing. And you're down, and and then you you know then you woke up and it's like you know what, <sighs> okay, I think I'm awake and I'm stretched <laughs> out. I think I'll put seventy points up on on, on the right. board. But yeah, eleven a.m. sometimes can be conducive to slow starts for the home team. I don't care who the coach is, what era you're in. That's just sometimes the 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 battle you're fighting or potentially fighting that you have to be careful of. So. Hopefully we don't get that uh, tomorrow morning, but uh, yeah, it's going to be bright and early. Uh, so yeah, get your coffee ready. Maybe pour some stuff in your coffee. Get after it. Let's go. We saw a rocky start at 9 p.m. a week ago. So I'm like, flip the script. Let's get out there, like you said, for kegs and, and eggs. Let's get some breakfast football going. And this is when they. This is kind of the sweet spot of basically when they're practicing every day uh, throughout the week. You know, this is a. Uh, there are afternoon practice teams and morning practice teams. Uh, the, the morning practice teams it became more in vogue three or four years ago, and it's like a wholesale change. You got to get everybody's class schedule flipped and adjusted so where you can do that. But it, it's so may, maybe there's a there's some thought that you know because you're a more and I don't know if North Texas if they're morning or afternoon or whatever, but yeah, you're you're practicing like it. I think like at nine nine thirty ten somewhere around in there for right. hour and a half, two hours, three hours, whatever it is, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So anyway, maybe maybe that you're more suited to to handle an early kick now. I don't know. Boy, I, I'm looking for anything to cling to, and these first two ball games <laughs> have been, have been after telling. the sun has gone down. So why not? Let's yeah. roll out there for an AM kick. <laughs> And see how that uh, sits with us. It would help if twenty eight plays. Uh, it would yes, help it would. If, if if two has a, a good game. Uh, it, it it would help if uh, uh, our man Harvey. I mean, you know, so some of that's going to factor yeah. into it too. But uh, yeah, you, this is an important one, man. You just f- fans won't immediately go, "Oh man, everything's better," or "I feel so much better about the direction." But you you want to not only do you want to win, you you want to play a cleaner game. Yes. And that's if if you could tell me right now tomorrow morning you're going to wake up 
and you're going to have, you know, f- five penalties or fewer. You're going to have, let's say, one turnover or fewer. I will take my chances with that, knowing not knowing anything else, because I feel like that right there w- would point to, okay, I bet everything else w- was pretty well if you didn't turn it over hardly at all and if you just played clean – football and didn't shoot yourself in the foot with, with the penalties. Um, so, yeah, you know, that, that's a couple of things that I'm looking at. And, you know, obviously you need to clean things up communication on defense and tackle better and not let the quarterback get loose. You need to be better offensively uh, with, with a variety of things and, and hopefully the group up front plays well, but you know, we'll, we'll see what we get. Well, I'm kind of wondering, I know all the talk has been um, about the defense and I don't mean to pile on to that, but I am kind of yeah. wondering if, First, today's episode brought to you by Factor. Fuel up this summer with Factor's no prep, no mess meals and meet all of your wellness goals thanks to the menu of chef crafted options like Calorie Smart, Protein Plus, even Keto. Factor's fresh, never frozen meals are dietitian approved and ready to eat in only two minutes. So no matter how busy you are, you'll always have time to enjoy nutritious, great tasting meals. What are you waiting for? Make today the day you kickstart a new healthy routine. With 35 different meals and more than 60 add-ons to choose from every week, you're going to always have new flavors to explore. From breakfast to dessert, you can stay fueled with easy, nutritious options. So go ahead and treat yourself to restaurant quality meals that feature premium ingredients like filet mignon, shrimp, blackened salmon, and much, much more, all while keeping kitchen time to a minimum since fat Factor meals are ready in only two minutes. No shopping, prepping, cooking, or cleaning up. So head to factormeals.com slash locked on college 50 and use our code locked on college 50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next month. That's code locked on college 50 at factormeals.com slash locked on college 50 for 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next month while your subscription is active with factor. You know, looking at a crux of the issue, um, as far as the matchup is concerned, given what North Texas has been from a turnover standpoint, if you can't harass them in that area, uh, I'm going to be a little bit disappointed. And I know, again, there can be some wild swings, but we've listened to Eric Morris talk about his offensive line issues. We know about the turnover numbers and even with a couple of guys hobbled or maybe outright absent, uh, I'm still kind of thinking I want to see Texas Tech's defense, again, not to pile on, but I really want to see them fill up some columns as far as either getting after the quarterback, disrupting at the line of scrimmage, what he's trying to do. And God forbid that turns into some takeaways down the field. Uh, and I can use the hashtag take three, as I'm sure Texas Tech's <laughs> social media team would also like to use. Yeah, you know they, they've had a hard time, as he talked about, with a lot of the, the 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 twists and stunts and just things that you start to see. Um, and and guess what? It, it typically when you show on film that you have trouble with that, what do you think the next opponent will do? Because mm-hmm. they want to see. Let's just see if they fix it all. That's why. I mean, you know, the flip side is. I mean, you think Chandler Morris won't just be looking to run a bit? I mean, you know, because this is what you put on film. Like, man, if he looks up and it's like you, the backs of everybody's jerseys are running off and all that, like tuck it and go. Uh, but I, I, yeah, you would like to think that whether it's blitzes or just just being better up front. I mean, Landon Peterson and Larry Moore are going to be the right side of this offensive line going against your right guard and right tackle. They were not – and I don't think that they would be good enough to play for you right now as much as you're even struggling on the offensive line. So if you can't – and I'm just picking those picking those yeah. guys out because they were former tech players. But you, you would like to think that you can get you know some movement, create some chaos. But, heck, man, I would have thought that you could have done the same thing against Ty Yanta, uh, who was playing for Abilene Christian in that offensive line, and you yep. really couldn't. No, you didn't. So – football's funny man and sometimes it's not funny um, uh, there's been nothing coming easy for texas tech so far this year yeah. there's kind of been some lopsided challenges as far as what has been more difficult from week one to week two but the sum of those two weeks nothing coming easy for texas tech as a team overall before we get out of here chris we'd be remiss if we didn't touch on 
one thing that I know will be cause for celebration uh, Saturday at Jones Stadium, and that is three new inductees in the Ring of Honor. We've got Thomas Howard. We've got Andre Tillman. We've got Wes Welker. Different eras going to be represented. Some crowd favorites from all of those eras represented. So always a fun thing when you have an opportunity to celebrate guys like that as, uh, well, it would make Master P proud. His name is on the wall. I think that's what he wanted. You're putting three more of them on the wall. So it's going to be a fun party in that regard, man. And uh, I hope we're in a good enough mood by the time we reach the induction portion of the program <laughs> to really still be pouring it out uh, because these are some guys we're celebrating, to say the least. Yeah, Ring of Honor up inside the stadium. Obviously, Wes Wilker, the headliner, and uh, you know, talking to Joey last time on his show, he's like, do you know how many times since I've gotten this job that people call me with the next Wes Wilker? He's like, not at, not every short white dude is Wes Wilker. The guy was a one of one. And we saw here um, a couple of pretty close – you know, Danny Amendola and the guy coaching against you tomorrow morning uh, for North Texas were as close as you were going to get uh, to to what Wes could do. But Wes was – I mean, Wes was so good, not just here, but even more so in the NFL, that not only the college coaches here, hey, man, I got the next Wes, Wes Welker, but NFL co- teams were like, we're, we're trying to find our version of Wes Welker. We're, we need to find the next Wes Welker in the NFL, which is this slot receiver that – catches 100 plus balls a year that can't be covered that you know then if you play zone you're screwed if you play man you're screwed and the quarter and he's going to catch everything i mean all that stuff and it re, he kind of reinvented the position in the nfl um and i'm glad he gets his uh, i guess the young people say uh i'm glad he gets his flowers um uh you know tomorrow morning in front of everybody i hope there's a, a full house there to to see it uh, I mean, he was the natural, and I'd be remiss if I didn't mention our man, Tommy McVeigh, who was most responsible for Wes Welker being a Red Raider. And, you know, Joey last night talked a ton about – it was one of the first numbers I got from Coach Kingsbury when I got the job was Wes. And, and you know, he's like he's come back and talked to the team. He's come back and talked to the clinic we've had. You know, and, and he's he's fairly busy these days. He's coaching uh, Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddle for the Dolphins and Eric Azukama uh, for the Dolphins and former Red Raider. But, yeah, Dolphins receivers coach and just been a, a really good asset to the NFL. And uh, I, I'm, I'll be – it'd be fun to see him get that honor because he certainly deserves it. Yeah, and uh, glad to celebrate the other two guys as well and Thomas yes. Howard and Andre Tillman, both representing two of arguably the best teams – in program history, I think we got an 11 and one season, a 10 and one season there in the early, mid, and late 70s that are represented by those two guys. Um, you're talking offense, you're talking defense as well. Uh, obviously, was not alive in these eras, but what I hear of Tillman is that he was the type of athlete at the tight end position that was sort of ahead of his time, not quite getting as many looks as a tight end once upon a time as maybe a guy that was an athlete like he was would in this day and age. And of course, Thomas Howard one of the best athletes to ever come out of Lubbock, Texas, America, a product of uh, Dunbar High School. These both these guys are both members of the Southwest Conference Hall of Fame. So uh, you're covering a lot of bases as far as this class. And uh, I think arguably one of the better ones, aside from maybe the foundational pieces, like first guys in, I think yeah. maybe one of the better classes as far as the achievements within the uh, scope of tech football history. I think that's, yeah, that, that's well said. Covers some various er- eras, I, I guess, and... Uh, and, it, and it also kind of reminds you how much the game has evolved and changed yeah. uh, over the over the years with just the the schemes have changed and the eras have changed and different positions get get more focus and, and all those things. Uh, and, and as far as looking back, I'd be remiss, too, if I didn't mention this note from the coach's show last night. You, you may appreciate this. You this this uh, this nickname may be lost on you because of your age. I picked up on it quickly, but I'm I'm a bit older than you are, but I did appreciate it greatly. Um, so I talked to Clay McGuire, who was on the show last night. We're talking about offensive line, and I said, "Hey, man, you know center is really hard at this level. You got a redshirt freshman." I was like, "It seems like he won you over pretty early when you got here," and he and he just went through. He's like, "I didn't have any preconceived notions about any of these guys. I took all the input." And I just made my own deal. I just I have nothing to say about this kid. He's very physical. He's got a ton of upside. 
He's just getting it figured out. He's got a great mustache. He goes, you know what I call him, don't you? And I said, no. And he goes, the manster. And I said, I was like, do, do you know who, who used to have that nickname? Is it wrestling related? I feel like I've heard no, it before, No, no. It's, it's Dallas Cowboy related, but it's okay. not the same position. But this dude is as tough and Texan and everything as you can. And it was in a ton of commercials. I think he's still maybe in a few commercials. Randy White. <laughs> it w- was known as the Manster. I mean, Randy White's done Copenhagen commercials. He's done Miller Lite commercials, <laughs> smashing beer cans on his head. But he had the he kind of had the mustache thing going, and he was kind of this this defensive lineman uh, that was playing next to Ed Too Tall Jones back in the oh yeah seventies eighties and all those things. But I was like, oh man, you you're going way back there, even switching. <laughs> sides of the ball but i think the mustache and i just think that uh i took it as quite a compliment for sure oh, yeah. Wilson. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah and you like to hear it because he's sure. obviously one of those uh foundational pieces we yes. hope for the future of uh, what we also hope to be an improving uh, group of offensive linemen uh man looking forward to seeing what we get from jones stadium and uh hopefully just as much as these ring of honor inductees are worthy of celebrating we'll have a ball game and a result worthy of celebrating as well we're here either way so don't worry about it uh stay with us on locked on texas tech for reaction on the other side of the red raiders and the mean green make sure you're subscribed on youtube or anywhere you get podcasts so to best facilitate missing nothing chris appreciate your time all week man enjoyed it and uh, enjoy the ball game guns up enjoy your friday people um and uh be thinking about some beer and you know egg and how to mix figure that to put that together for bright and early in the morning or just don't i don't know but uh yeah we'll uh we'll have a good friday we'll see everybody in the morning at the jones i think it's a good warm up for uh hunting season man this is right around the corner when you need to be out there at sunrise with maybe a set of binoculars that you lift up to your eye and you think whoops that's the set of binocular flasks that I take to Jones Stadium. All right, might as well have a sip. Now hand me the real deal so I can get the glass in. It's a good warm-up because that's just around the corner uh, as well. So set the alarm clocks early. Not going to tell you to take it easy on Friday night. You got to grind through it. That's the Red Raider way. Let's make a weekend out of it. For Chris, I'm Casey. Thanks for being out there. A special shout-out to those everydayers mixing it up. Continue to do that in the YouTube comments. One of the best way to help us grow the show. Thanks for the time, and we hope to see you back for the next round on Locked On Texas Tech.